What's up everybody? Welcome back. I got another sort of speaker repair video. Uh, by request, if I could just uh, make a request to you guys or, or people in general, stop donating broken speakers <laughs> to Goodwill or thrift stores. It's just, it's kind of mean. Um, but it's kind of useful in a way to me because they're usually really easy to fix. I got a set of speakers here and this is only two of the speakers. It's a 2.1 system. There's an amp and a sub, but it's not hooked up right now. We don't need them to be hooked up to demonstrate that they don't work. So if we go ahead and play some music here. Hopefully you can hear that one channel doesn't work. This one over here. This one works fine. And that's usually not to do to anything inside the speakers. In my experience, it's always the cable that's gone bad. And that's a real simple fix, but it can be sort of a lengthy fix, depending on how hard it is to get into the speakers themselves. These ones are not too bad. Um, some can be a real pain. This one is just it's just glued together, and I've already taken this one apart. It's pretty simple with just a, a plastic pick and just prying it apart. And there's usually not a whole lot in these, so it makes it real easy to repair. So let me just show you what the problem actually is. I've got the dead speaker up here. Um, just to make this simpler. And then... Here's the plug, the 3.5 millimeter jack for it. And if you just bend it a little bit, there we go. I think I heard it. There it is. So the problem lies in there. There is a bad connection inside of it because this cord here is fairly prone to bending and cracking the inside of it um, simply because it plugs into a uh, subwoofer and the subwoofer is down under the desk and you know um, you know you push your feet around and it bumps the subwoofer pushes up against the wall and stuff like that and, and the cord ends up doing something like that and it just wears out over time so it's a quick easy fix what you got to do is you got to find another um, oh wait Find another 3.5 millimeter jack, preferably stereo, because you've got two speakers. And it's kind of a, um, what's the word? You have to sacrifice it. So we're gonna cut off one end and use the other. And we have to get into these speakers and unsolder the old wire and solder this wire on. And it's real simple to do, I'll show you. So step one is gonna be getting into your speaker cases. And I already, uh, like I said, I already did this one, no problem. And what I used was oh, a little safe pry tool. Um, I've seen these be called a uh, like a guitar pick or something. And, and really, it, it just needs to be something that doesn't damage the outside of the case. And if you really don't care about the outside of the case, I mean, well then go for broke. Yeah, use a butter knife or a, a knife or flathead screwdriver, whatever you got. But um, you're just going to work around the edges and pop it free. And once you get enough of it, the, the other side usually just pops off. You usually don't have to go all the way around. So I'm gonna work into that and I'll show you how to do it. So take your pick, just wedge it in there. You gotta kinda force it. You're gonna, you might hear some crinkling, some cracking, and it's usually the glue. And you just kinda work your way around you hear that? That was a good sound, even though it sounds bad. <laughs> and this is absolutely easier to do when you don't have a light and a camera <laughs> in front of it. There we go. top part is a little bit more difficult, at least it was on the other one. Yeah, 
that's pretty difficult. All right, so you get the gist of it. I'm gonna do this without the camera in front of my face so I can um, get it done, and I'll be right back. Okay, I switched over to my larger safe pry tool. Uh, bumping the camera. And you're gonna get it in between there, um, the edge of the speaker case and the speaker uh, itself, whatever you call this. And it's just, yep, there we go. Pop it right out. And the only reason we're doing this is because, like I said, we gotta replace these wires. Zoom in. We're gonna replace these wires with our new one. So inside of a um, 3.5 millimeter speaker wire, Logitech was nice enough to label these positive and negative, if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. And the negative inside the speaker wire is always like an unshielded, like twisted, well, I can't say always, but a lot of times it's an unshielded, twisted, um, just uh, metal, uh, uninsulated wire. And it makes it easy to identify them. The one with insulation is positive, the one without insulation is negative. And you can just, um, it's always a good idea to take a picture of this just in case something's weird, um, which I've already done. So it'll be real, uh, it'll be very easy to reassemble it because I've already uh, documented positive and negative, uh, shielded, unshielded. But in this case, it's not really that important. Like I said, it's got a positive and negative on there. If it didn't, there's a little bit more work involved. All right, I got my soldering iron all heated up. It's over there on the other table, but unfortunately my soldering table has become a catch-all right now, so we're just going to do what we can with this. So this should unsolder very quickly. Let me get a pair of tweezers. I'm gonna grab the wire. We could just cut this, but I wanna be cleaner. Yep, okay, there we go. There's one end. Better. There we go. Easy peasy. Take the speaker out. Solder in there so we're safe. And now we have to Get the rattlies out of there. And the old glue that's in these things usually doesn't need to be heated up to get out. And they've also tied it in a knot. That is some cheap, <laughs> um, that is a cheap but effective way to keep the wire from pulling out. Tension relief. Pull that through there, boom. And I'm going to do the other one off camera here. You don't need to see that. Okay, so we got them all apart. That's a simple part. And the whole thing is simple. Um, and we don't really have to keep track of which speaker was left and right. Um, these, there's, there's no electronics in these, so we don't really need to. We can designate uh, right and left if we want. Um, they do come with these nice little handy, you know, right and left stickers on them. So... If you remember when we were taking it apart, the red on the other wire was uh, the right side and the white was the left side, just like an RCA. And so we can follow that trend when we open that new wire. I don't know what's going to be inside the new wire, um, but we'll just make sure that we sort of follow the same suit. If you don't know, um, so the way a 3.5 millimeter there we go. The way a 3.5 millimeter audio jack works is pretty simple. Um, you've got, and I might be wrong on this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> you have got come here, pointer, three separated zones on it, and there's probably some terminology for them. So you have three separated zones on it. You have this area here, this area here, and this area here. So we got our red wire. And we're just checking continuity, so it doesn't matter if you touch the red wire or the black wire, or red lead or the black lead to it. And if we touch the bottom, nothing. Touch the top, nothing. Touch the middle, there's our continuity. So, easy way to keep these um, your channels straight on this so that you can hook it up exactly the same way as before. It just makes life a little bit easier if the right channel 
is labeled right and the left channel is labeled left and I'm rambling because this was fun. Okay, out of the way my guy. So now we have to sacrifice wire and like I said, make sure it is a, a stereo, um, what you call it. Some of these are single channel, some of them are multi-channel, some of these, like if you're getting it from a thrift store or something like that, some of them carry power. It's Make sure it's an audio 3.5. I'm gonna cut the end off and then separate the wires and start it and then you can separate it all the way down uh, no worries so we don't need a huge amount of separation this should do and then we're going to just give us a couple of inches in there there we go and like I said so we have our uh, unshielded wire. This is the ground. Make sure you get all of the strands. Oh, let's stay in shot. Just twist them together. So this is a little bit heavier duty wire than what was in there, but we don't have to worry about that. Red is the right side, white is the left side. Where are you? Come up here. All the strands join in. Everybody join the strands. So we're going to feed this through the small hole in the back. There we go. And then I should probably put a knot in it like it had. There we go. Put a knot in it. Tension relief. Can't be pulled through. And now we can solder this onto our speaker. Soldering it back on is the opposite of desoldering it. I'm going to get this camera and this light out of my way and solder it on there. Okay. So I've got it soldered on in there and um, I've routed the wire in such a way that those wires inside there should never touch. And if you want to see how good a job you've done, oh, stay in there. There's nothing in the world that says you can't, as well, let me take that back. As long as the other end isn't touching each other, there's nothing in the world that says you can't plug it in with only one side hooked up to see if your speaker works. And to make sure you've got it into the right channel. So this is the left speaker. I'm gonna plug my, this into my computer. And we've got a working left speaker. Now, if you did hook those up opposite, you know, you put the negative to the positive, positive to the negative uh, of the speaker, it'll still make sound, but it'll be really weird sounding. The this, this speaker cone, instead of pushing out, will push in or pull in, and it'll make really a, a really weird sound. Um, you'll hear the music, but it's going to be very, I don't know how to explain it. Muffled is probably the word. Anyways, it won't hurt anything. It's just, um, it's wrong. So <laughs> you have to take it apart and do it again. But this side is done. We'll glue these cases back together in a few minutes. I'm going to solder up the right speaker and we'll give it another test and make sure things work. Also make sure you unplug the other end of your speakers from your computer or your sound source. Don't solder on them or don't solder it on there uh, when it's hooked up to your source. That would be bad. Probably. So now the right side is soldered on there. And now we should have... That's probably going to fall out of there. Whatever. I'll glue those on in a second. There we go. So we should have a left and right channel. Really? Right as the song ends? I'm testing it. Come on, meow.
two channels again. So I'm gonna glue these things back together. So the hot glue wasn't working great. You would put your blobs on and stick it together and it would hold for a second, but like you could, you could take it and just like shake it and it would fall out. So it was definitely not making a seal or uh, it was definitely not adhering to it. Um, I found this looking through um, sort of my like junk drawer and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully this will work. But it, it definitely uh, allows you to put it on and gives you some working time. So I'm going to stick it together and see what happens. Okay, so it's been roughly about an hour. This stuff has had plenty of time to dry. Turns out it takes, you know, about 45 minutes. I give it a little longer just to make sure it was, uh, you know, good and solid. And now we're all hooked up again. That was a successful uh, repair. Hope this helps you. <laughs> Uh, I hope it's uh, coherent enough to um, get you through it, and um, I hope you're able to use it to fix any of the speakers that you're having problems with. So, um, if it does help you, give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to my channel. I do this. I do repair stuff like this um, once in a while, mostly uh, computer stuff and fixing computers. But um, yeah, like I said, if you liked it, uh, feel free to subscribe. And um, more is coming in the future. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.